I used to drink a lot of coffee, and my hands shook even more than they do now. About 12 years ago, maybe more now, I went to China for a week, and when I left, I was really addicted to coffee, and when I came back, I found myself addicted to green tea, and since then, I've drunk nearly entirely green tea, and very rarely do I drink coffee. And the result is that if I do have some coffee, I feel hyper for the rest of the day, and I really can't sleep. Well, it's a molecule I know, and I can just about recognize its structure. Get together some carbons. Carbons, we've got nitrogen, we've got oxygen, and we've got hydrogen. Whoops, scattering atoms everywhere. If I just saw it as a random molecule, I would probably recognize it because you usually see it on people's coffee cups and things like that, so there's quite a good hint this is cupping. If you've never had coffee before, then you probably do get some stimulation from it. Um, there's no doubt about that, it's been proven. Uh, it can help uh, make you a bit more alert and feel a bit more vital for a, for a few minutes. Uh, if you have too much, of course, a lethal dose of coffee is about 80 cups a day. So do not approach that at all. <laughs> I have read the theory, and I don't know if this is correct, that if you take coffee or some other caffeinated drink at a regular time each day, then your body starts making the antidote to the caffeine before you get to coffee time. So if you have coffee at 10.30 in the morning, around about 10 o'clock your body starts making this antidote. So you tend to feel really quite in need of the caffeine just to get you back to normal state. So this is about six cups of coffee in here. And we're just going to cool that down. But on the other hand, if you're suddenly given coffee at a time when you're not expecting it, then your body hasn't got ready to receive this dose of caffeine and it has a much bigger effect than you expect. And so it may be not so much that people are addicted to coffee, but they are counteracting the negative effects of what's in their body. Caffeine is, is very soluble in hot water. But it's much, much less soluble, 30 times less soluble in room temperature water. So we're going to cool it down so it's less soluble in the water. Hydroxide solution. Drinking tea and coffee is very important in science in the UK and in many labs. People meet together every day to drink tea and coffee and some of the best ideas can grow up over tea and coffee because when people are relaxed, suddenly clever ideas come in their head. An unexpected side effect of caffeine is its role in science, not directly, but in many labs, many departments like this one at Nottingham, the scientists meet together once or perhaps twice a day to drink coffee. And quite often, they have really good ideas. The caffeine sort of relaxes them. And when they're not thinking really hard, suddenly a good idea comes into their head. In fact, at the Laboratory of Molecular Biology in Cambridge, which has won, I think, 14 Nobel Prizes, there was a rule, perhaps there still is, that if people are discussing in the coffee room, it's not allowed to close in case they're just about to get a good idea and if the coffee room closes, it may be lost forever. So you never know, if you sit a long time drinking coffee, you might win the Nobel Prize. The water water is more dense than ethyl acetate, so it sinks to the bottom, they're not miscible. So we're just draining off that bottom layer at the moment, the water layer. And as it goes down, you're seeing the top layer is actually fairly clear. So the caffeine now, hopefully, is in that top layer. Brilliant. Right. Um, 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 this and this. There we are. Boom, boom, boom. That. Just underneath that. All right, so let's just get that into a conical flask. So there's still some water 
in the thalassotate. So what we're going to use is a, a drying agent, magnesium sulfate, otherwise known as Epsom salts. So students often ask me, how do you know how much magnesium sulfate to put in to dry? And the answer is when it goes completely white and fluffy, so there's quite a lot of water in there, you can see how it's clouded and clumped together, so let's put a bit more in. So it's when you get that sort of snowstorm effect. So just let that dry for a moment, and then we'll filter it off. So what we have here is our caffeine. So the reds here denote oxygen. You've got carbon atoms represented by the black. These smaller white ones are hydrogen. And then the blue ones here, which you've got four, are nitrogen. So it's kind of the most common elements that make up so many um, what we call aromatics or organic molecules. I tried to find a, a, a mug with a caffeine molecule and it had to go back to the periodic table. But what we had sent in by one of our viewers, um, this gentleman here is clearly a fan of the uh, periodic videos and he's there uh, enjoying a video of Martin with his brew in hand. But he also included in his email to us a tattoo that he's got, as you can see there molecule of caffeine. So he's clearly a much more devoted fan to the molecule than I am. I just prefer drinking it rather than inking it on myself. Okay, so now our caffeine is in the ethyl acetate solution and we're now going to remove the ethyl acetate from it. So you're going to put one of these on. These are called Keck clips. And Dr Keck sadly died last year but a very handy clip that bears his name will go on for many, many years to come. Right, so now I need some card ice. Okay, so this is the cowboy approach to how to do it. So here we've got some solid CO2. We're going to use that con to condense the uh, ethyl acetate so it doesn't go down the drains or into the atmosphere. Okay, so what we're doing is we're lowering the pressure in the system. So that means that, that below the boiling point, we're lowering the boiling point of the organic solvent of ethyl acetate. So in here we've got ethyl acetate, very low pressure in here, currently around 90 millibars. And that solvent is evaporating, it's coming up here and it's condensing on this very cold card ice, uh, cold finger here. And you can see it coming down and being collected in the flask uh, below. So what we want to do is to remove all of that solvent and just leave what was in the solvent remaining, and that, that should be the caffeine. I hope we'll have some in there. I don't think it's going to be very much, because it was only six cups of coffee, but there should be 20 or 30 milligrams, maybe a little bit more if we're lucky. So what do you think about someone adorning themselves with a uh, caffeine molecule? It's certainly a level of geekdom that I have not subscribed to, uh, but I commend him for his devotion to this particular molecule. Well, um, Sam, that's about to change, because <laughs> we've been sent something which I'm giving to you as a gift. This, this was sent to periodic videos. No way. Oh, holy moly. Wow, this is absolutely incredible. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So we've got rid of most of the ethyl acetate now, just the last few dregs coming off. And you can see that we've got a, a fairly light yellow powder. Some of the color has come through from the coffee. All right, so there we go, there's some caffeine. Now, if we were really good chemists, we'd recrystallise that and get some nice white crystals. And what we're going to do is just going to put this on a high vacuum system to get the very last traces of ethyl acetate out. This is absolutely gorgeous. I've got a caffeine molecule on a chain. Um, it's a necklace, evidently, um, but it's so cool. What is this? I want to know what it's made of. I absolutely adore this. Um, it is, it's incredible. And it's so, dare I say, it's, I know it's caffeine, but it's so sweet. It's so cute and I love it. But you just, you just said people who adorn themselves with caffeine. Yeah, I know, I take it back now, don't I? I look like a complete idiot at, uh, well, no, there's a difference between getting it inked permanently and being able to take it on and off. I'm gonna wear this, because I, 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 I'm going to the Webby Awards. Um, and I'm going to wear this. 
I'm definitely going to wear this on the night. It's going to be amazing. I had planned on wearing something else, but no, I'm definitely going to take this to New York and I'm going to wear it for the Webby Awards because it's just, it's absolutely immense. I love it. Thank you to whoever made this. So that's been on there for five minutes, so we'll take this off now. I'm going to wear it. Oh, 100 milligrams. So six cups of coffee has 100 milligrams of caffeine. 17 or so milligrams in a cup of that particular coffee. Sort of in its amorphous powder form. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.